prepare yourself for the best of the best and the worst of the worst. Hello everybody, Nikki Mara here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. I hope you all have had a fabulous week and are ready for another fun ranking video. And I want to thank you guys so much for all the love on last week's video. Ranking Disney sequels was probably one of the most heavily requested videos of all time. And while the preparation for that video was rough. I am so glad that you all enjoyed the video so much, so thank you so much for the love. And today we are journeying into yet another category of Disney movies, which are the live-action Disney movies. Now, you might be thinking to yourself, wait a minute, Nikki, didn't you already do a video on the live-action movies? To which I say, yes, I have already done a video ranking the live-action remakes of animated Disney movies, which I will link up above in case you are interested in that. But today we are going to be avoiding those live action remakes and we are going to be ranking just Disney's original live action movies. And believe me when I say there are some fantastic Disney movies on today's list and there are also others. <laughs> And if you're new here, hi, my name is Nikki Mara and I am a Disney content creator and I make magical content on YouTube, TikTok, Instagram, and Snapchat. My long form videos here on YouTube drop every Friday at 5 p.m. So if you're not already, make sure to subscribe down below so that way you never miss magic from me. And if you're excited for today's list and hoping that your favorite movie ends up in a high spot, make sure to like the video. And as always, before we jump into today's video, I do have some brief disclaimers and conditions for the list that we're going to be talking about today. But if you would like to jump right into today's ranking, then you can head right to the this timestamp. First and foremost for our disclaimers, I am not associated with the Walt Disney Company and therefore I do not speak for the brand or the company and all of the opinions in this video are just my own. And secondly, I welcome any and all opinions surrounding these Disney movies down in my comment section, so make sure to leave your thoughts down below. I am very excited to see what you guys have to say about all of these live action Disney movies. And thirdly, spoiler warning for all of the Disney live action movies that we're going to be talking about today, I will be going into some plot details that may or may not ruin the movie if you haven't seen it before but I only do that to specifically justify my ranking of it. So if there's a certain movie that you don't want spoiled, I would just suggest skipping on to the next number. And next, moving on to our conditions, today's list is comprised of Disney live action movies. They cannot be movies that are a remake of an animated Disney movie. These movies can include animation sequences, but very brief ones. They do have to primarily be live action. These movies are also created by the Disney company and also released under the Walt Disney Company name. And the final condition on today's list is that I have to have seen it. And what do I mean by that? Well, Disney has upwards of six to 700 movies, and I have absolutely not seen all of them. That is not my area of expertise. My expertise specifically lies in the animated movies. And so to make it on today's list, I, I just have to have seen the movie, which means that if a movie that you're expecting to be on this list doesn't show up, it's most likely because I haven't seen it. So if I don't rank one that you were expecting to see, make sure to leave it down below and let me know all of your thoughts on it so that way I might be inclined to watch it. And we are also going to be limiting today's list to 50 Disney live action movies because there are just way too many to make one full video on. Maybe if I branch off and watch more in the future, maybe I'll have to do a part two to this video. We'll have to see. <sighs> but with all of those disclaimers and conditions out of the way, I believe we are ready to start ranking some live action Disney movies. And as always with my movie ranking lists, we are going to be breaking down the list into different tiers. I will be sure to tell you when we've moved on to a new tier, as well as the general vibe of each tier. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a snack and a drink, and let's get into today's list. Today we are starting all the way down with the F tier. The F tier on this this list is comprised of movies that I simply do not like. Either I ended up seeing them when I was younger in childhood and something traumatic and it happened so I didn't end up re-watching it, or they're just movies that I really didn't have a great time sitting down and watching. Overall, I wouldn't really recommend these Disney live action movies, but maybe you'd want to experience it once? Maybe? <laughs> but with that, we're going to start the list today all the way down at the bottom at number 50, which is Old Yeller. Yeah. Now, Old Yeller is a movie about a runaway dog. He ends up damaging the field of a character named Travis. However, the characters Travis and Katie in this movie end up welcoming in Old Yeller and treat him like he's family. Eventually, Yeller saves Arliss from a bear attack, which makes him even more lovable. And these kids grow so close to him throughout the movie, which is why it ranks at number 50, because of the ending. It is traumatic. <laughs> As a brief spoiler warning, we're going to get into some sad topics here for just a second. But unfortunately, at the end of this movie, there is an outbreak of rabies and Old Yeller ends up with rabies. And so Travis and his friends are forced to... 
how do I say this? How do I say this? How do I say this? Put old Yeller out of his misery. Successfully complete Corella Deville's plan, but without the coats part of it. Help old Yeller buy the farm. There's no easy way to put it. I hope you get the picture. This is an absolutely heart-wrenching ending and a very traumatic ending for a Disney movie. This is arguably one of the saddest moments in any Disney movie, even comparing to the death of Bambi's mother. But yeah, I have watched this movie once. It is a really good movie, but the ending is just not something that I ever feel like revisiting. And so Old Taylor goes at number 50 on today's list. Next we move on up to number 49 on my list, which is Bed Knobs and Broomsticks. Now this might come as quite a surprise considering this movie stars Angela Lansbury, who's a huge star and who I'm a big fan of. However, I do not, this movie, I, 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 I have no idea what to say about it. This movie tells the story of Eglantine Price and Amelius Brown, who with the help of three children are trying to use Miss Price's supernatural powers to defeat the Nazi enemies. And it's a musical. I do know a few years ago that there was like a potential Broadway show announced for this movie, but I, I'm just gonna be honest, there's no standout music to this movie whatsoever. The only thing I like about it is Angela Lansbury, but like, there's not enough of her to like, distract from the rest of what's happening. And I may have an unpopular opinion on this movie, but I, I just don't enjoy it. I do not see myself rewatching this one. Sorry. The next thing, move on up to number 48 on my list, which is Bridge to Terabithia. Also, brief spoiler alert coming up, if, in case you haven't seen it. This movie tells the story of friends Jesse and Leslie who are creating a magical world in their minds. They find a rope swing that goes across a river, and across that river they create the world of Terabithia. It's honestly a very beautiful movie, except for the fact that Leslie ends up passing away halfway through the movie. And I don't know if it's just because I saw this when I was younger and was like, traumatized by the fact that like his best friend died but like it was it was a lot it was a lot and I've like revisited it maybe once but I don't really feel a need to go back. There are a lot better mythical worlds created in other Disney movies that I am happy to enjoy. <laughs> Moving on up to number 47 on my list is Tomorrowland. Tomorrowland tells the story of Casey Newton who finds a lapel pin with a T on it and when she ends up touching it, it transports her into the land of Tomorrowland. And she along with Frank Walker have to discover some many mysterious secrets surrounding Tomorrowland. If I'm gonna be completely honest, this plot barely sticks in my mind, and I did have to look up a summary of it before I started this video. Tomorrowland was just not one that I thoroughly enjoyed. If anything, the only things that stuck out to me were the Disney references, such as finding Space Mountain in the background of one of the scenes, and also that one of the leading characters is dressed as an homage to Wendy Darling. But besides that, eh. And for the final movie in our F tier today, we are moving on up to number 46, which is Oz the Great and Powerful. Now I know this movie is very visually stunning. There are so many bright colors and flashy sequences, but I am just not a fan of the plot. The plot tells the story of Oscar Diggs, who ends up becoming the Wizard of Oz, and how he got swept away in a tornado and brought to Oz, thinking now that he has so much potential to gain power. He ends up meeting three witches, Glinda, Evanora, and Theodora, with Evanora eventually becoming the Witch of the East, Theodora eventually becoming the Wicked Witch of the West, and Glinda becoming... Glinda. The main problem that I have with this movie is that it doesn't closely follow the original Oz novels, and it sort of feels like Disney took this Oz world in general and sort of did what they wanted with it. And it honestly wasn't great. Again, just my opinion. Very visually stunning, but just not one of my favorites. And next we are moving on up to the D tier. Now the D tier is full of movies that just aren't my favorite. They either weren't attention grabbing or didn't leave a lasting impression on me. And so while they're in my wheelhouse a little bit more than the F tier, they're still not the main live action Disney movies that I know and love in my heart. We are starting off the D tier today in number 45, which is Narnia Prince Caspian. Now this movie tells the story of the Pevensey children returning to Narnia about 1300 years in the future when a brand new war has begun. 
The Pevensey children join Prince Caspian to defeat King Miraz, and much like the original, which we're going to be talking about a little bit later on this list, they restore peace to the land of Narnia. This movie was okay. It wasn't necessarily memorable to me. Actually, the most memorable thing about this movie was the walkthrough section of Narnia that they used to have in Disney's Hollywood Studios. It's the building that currently houses One Man's Dream and the live-action Ariel meet-and-greet, but that little building actually used to house a Narnia walkthrough attraction, which is actually my fondest memories of this movie. But next we move on up to number 44 on my list, which is So Dear to My Heart. Now, So Dear to My Heart stars a very well-known Disney voice actor, Bobby Driscoll. And while you may not recognize his name right away, you will definitely know his voice, as he is the voice of Peter Pan. Bobby Driscoll plays Jeremiah, who is raising a baby black lamb and trying to enter the lamb into the state fair contest. He needs to find different ways to earn money in order to get his lamb into the contest, and also is a big daydreamer of thinking of different ways to get that money and also keep his very wild pet under control. It's Okay, it's a little bit better than Prince Caspian, but like, in all honesty, this is not one that I would recommend still. So next we'll move on up to number 43 on my list, a title that many of you might know, which is Hocus Pocus 2. Now, for the absolute phenomenon that the first movie was, and we will also be talking about that one on this list today, Hocus Pocus 2 was just not one of my favorites. It was wonderful to see Bette Midler, Kathy and Jimmy, and Sarah Jessica Parker reprise their roles as the Sanderson sisters, but all of the other characters and plot lines in this movie didn't feel nearly as cohesive as the original movie. And so I liked it, it was all right, but in all honesty, the original is so good that this one kind of falls short. In my opinion, of course. But next we move on up to number 42 on my list, which is the Shaggy Dog. Shaggy Dog tells the story of Dave Douglas, who is a workaholic who always puts himself and his work before his family. And after he takes a case in an animal laboratory, he finds himself periodically turning into a dog. And so he has to go about his life sort of navigating that random moment when he's just going to turn into a dog. Again, it's very fun and it's a classic Disney movie. It's just not one of my personal favorites. It's not as memorable as a lot of others. But next we move on up to number 41 on my list, one that I might get some heat for, which is The Muppets Most Wanted. This movie has to do with Kermit and the gang going on a brand new tour and also having to deal with a lookalike criminal to Kermit named Constantine. He often steps into Kermit's position and will mess with the Muppets and also try to steal London's crown jewels. Now I am going to say this right off the bat because there are a few other ones that we're gonna be talking about, but the Disney Muppets movies aren't necessarily my favorite. I do like a lot of the original Muppets movies before they were acquired by the Disney company. And so, yeah, this one's just okay for me. It's not bad, but it's, it's okay. Next, we move on up to number 40 on my list, which is a Muppets Christmas Carol. Now, the Muppets Christmas Carol is a Muppet version of a Christmas Carol. Go figure. <laughs> and it's very cute. It's very well done. I like it. Again, it is a seasonal movie. It's only one that you would typically watch around the holidays. And it's also not my favorite version of A Christmas Carol. That is Mickey's Christmas Carol. And so when given the option, when I want to experience the story around the holidays, I typically don't go for this one. But next we move on up to number 39 on my list, which is the Muppets. Now, The Muppets tells the story of Walter. He is The Muppets' biggest fan. Walter is traveling with his brother and his brother's girlfriend to The Muppet Studios and finds out that there are plans to destroy The Muppet Studios in order to drill for oil. And so this movie tells the story of how Walter saved The Muppets. This movie is cute overall. It's, again, not one of my most favorites, but it does have some really funny moments, such as the song Man or a Muppet. But overall, Again, it's just not one of my favorites. It's okay, but yeah, there are other movies on this list that I would definitely recommend a lot more. And with that, we have reached number 38, which is the final movie within the D tier, which is the original Parent Trap. The Parent Trap tells the story of two identical twins who are separated when their parents end up getting divorced. One child goes with the father and one goes with the mother. They come together again years later down the road at a summer camp and decide to switch places in order to scheme to get their parents back together. This is honestly a pretty fun movie. I do enjoy this one. Again, just not nearly as iconic as a lot of other movies on this list. And with that, my friends, we have reached the C tier 
thank goodness. <laughs> now the C tier are movies that I think are okay. I didn't necessarily have a bad experience with these movies, I just didn't have the best experience. We all gravitate to certain movies over others, and these were just ones that I didn't necessarily gravitate to, but I didn't dislike them by any means. And my guess is you all will recognize a lot more of the movie titles from here on out in today's list because the bottom of the pack is the not so popular ones. So with that we're gonna start off the C tier with number 37, which is The Princess Diaries 2. This movie continues the plot of Princess Mia, who is graduating from Princeton and coming to terms with her princesshood. So she travels back to Genovia with her best friend, but is informed by her grandmother that unfortunately she's not going to be able to take the crown unless she is married within 30 days. This movie is kind of okay, but again, much like Hocus Pocus 2, I had a similar experience where the original is just such a standout that the second one didn't necessarily live up, in my opinion. I know there are many fans of the Princess Diaries series, and so I absolutely understand that this one might rank a lot higher for you, but it just wasn't my personal favorite. Although I am so excited if they do end up coming out with a Princess Diaries 3, can we talk about it? But with that, we're moving on up to number 36 on my list, which is The Muppets Treasure Island, and also my highest ranking Muppets movie on today's list. Now this movie takes the Muppets and just inserts them right into the plot of Treasure Island. It's very cute, it's very well done, it's one that I remember from when I was very little. I would definitely recommend giving this one a watch. It is one of my favorite versions of Treasure Island. Unlike Treasure Planet, I'm sorry. <laughs> but next we're moving on up to number 35 on my list, which is the 2003 version of The Haunted Mansion. This movie tells the story of Jim Evers, who is accused by his wife of neglecting her and his kids, and so he takes them on a family trip. And one of their destinations ends up being this haunted mansion. And it's safe to say that there are a lot of shenanigans that go down with all of the silly spooks. I I think this movie is okay, it's definitely not one that I revisit a ton, specifically because we now have a really good version of the Haunted Mansion movie, which we will talk about very shortly. <laughs> but next we move on up to number 34 on my list, which is The Absent-Minded Professor. Now I actually really enjoyed this movie. The Absent-Minded Professor tells the story of an absent-minded professor who ends up inventing a flying rubber, which he ends up calling Flubber. And while a lot of different crooks are trying to steal his formula, he ends up doing some pretty cool things with it, such as making his Model T Ford fly, and also helping a college basketball team reach victory. This one's honestly super fun, and if you haven't seen it, I would definitely recommend watching it once. It's a fun, feel-good kind of movie. But next we move on up to number 33 on my list, which is Angels in the Outfield. I know, a sports movie on this list? Whoa! <laughs> Angels in the Outfield tells the story of a foster kid named Roger. His dad ends up promising to reunite his family if the Angels make it into the World Series, and so he prays to Angels to help make this happen. And Angels actually appear to him and help the Angels win the game. It's honestly a really fun movie, would definitely recommend watching it once, but again, not necessarily one of my favorites on today's list. Next we move on up to number 32 on my list, which is Tron. Now Tron is a great ride, although on the movie list, it's okay. This movie tells the story of Kevin Flynn and finding out that a lot of his technology is being stolen by his coworker, and he ends up getting digitized and has to go up against digital versions of people who've been stealing his work. And he ends up becoming a freedom fighter for the oppressed programs of the grid. Overall, it's an okay movie, but my god, I'm so glad we got one of the best rides in the Magic Kingdom out of it. So it's, it's got to rank a little bit higher than the others. <laughs> But next we move on up to number 31 on my list, which is the movie Flubber. This movie tells the story of Philip Brainard. He ends up discovering a rubber-like substance, which he names Flubber, and unfortunately he's so enamored with it that he ends up missing his own wedding day. It's just so fun to watch Flubber because this little creature has a mind of its own and just wreaks havoc over this entire movie. Overall, this is a very cute movie and... Yeah, it's gonna go in the higher end of the C tier. But with that, we have reached the final movie within the C tier today. At number 30 is Return to Oz. This movie tells the story of Dorothy Gale returning to Oz and finding the yellow brick road has been completely destroyed. She finds out that Oz is now under the control of an evil empire, and so now she has to round up a brand new group of friends to help rescue the Scarecrow, the Tin Man, and the Lion. Overall, this is a relatively faithful retelling to the original novels, but this movie is kind of scary, so caution if you decide to watch it. <laughs> but next we're moving on up to the B tier. The B tier is full of movies that I 
enjoyed quite a bit. Now these definitely aren't some of my favorites, but I did really enjoy them, and so I want to give them the recognition that they deserve, which is a pretty good thumbs up. We are starting off the B tier at number 29, which is Honey, I Shrunk the Kids. This movie tells the story of Professor Wayne Zielinski and his children. He ends up creating a shrink ray, and unfortunately his kids get a hold of it, and they end up shrinking down. And so the entire plot is trying to return his children to normal size. Overall, it's a very funny movie. I did enjoy it quite a bit. And and yeah, that's it. <laughs> Next we move on up to number 28 on my list, which is Disenchanted. Now, Disenchanted was a relatively good movie. I did enjoy it. However, much like the other live action sequels that we've talked about so far, it's not as good as the original. This movie tells the story of Giselle, who is continuing on in her story, and eventually she ends up having to become the evil stepmother. And Morgan, with the help of Nancy, is able to free her from this inevitable curse that was going to make her stay evil. Overall, it has some pretty good songs, but in all honesty, it's just not as iconic as the original to me, but I did enjoy it quite a bit. Next, we move on up to number 27 on my list, which is Into the Woods. Now, Into the Woods was not originally written by the Walt Disney Company, but they did create their own version of it. Now, the reason why this only makes the B tier is that I prefer the original a lot more. Because the original story is so dark, Disney ended up cutting quite a bit of it to avoid certain character deaths and avoid certain songs. And so we kind of get a piece of Into the Woods that's not necessarily the most emotionally deep. But essentially this movie is about all of these storybook characters being written together and all being in the exact same storyline and they all influence each other's plots. Overall it's kind of fun, but I would exercise caution because there is a lot of singing in this movie. Next we move on up to number 26 on my list, which is Newsies. Newsies tells the story of the newspaper boys going on strike. This movie ended up being the basis for the very popular Disney Broadway show that eventually went to Broadway. Now, now, I prefer the Broadway version significantly more, but the original movie is actually not half bad. It's a very solid starting point to create a very emotionally deep musical on top of. And so yeah, Newsies is really good, would definitely recommend. Next we move on up to number 25 on my list, which is The Mighty Ducks. Yes another sports movie. Now, in all honesty, I've revisited this one like maybe once or twice, but this movie I remember leaving me with a very feel-good energy at the end of the movie. It tells a story about the Mighty Ducks who are an underdog hockey team, and they end up winning and coming out on top, and it's sort of this just emotionally fulfilling movie that leaves you very happy at the end. So yeah, I really enjoy the Mighty Ducks, and I actually kind of want to revisit that one again soon. I know, I'm choosing to watch sports movies over Disney movies. Who am I? <laughs> but next we move on up to number 24 on my list, which is Treasure Island, the original version. Treasure Island is of course the classic story of Jim Hawkins and Long John Silver setting out to find buried treasure. This movie, while quite old, is a very classic, and I just very much enjoy seeing a version of this movie that was done so long ago. It's very good, and definitely a Disney classic. But next we move on up to number 23 on my list, which is Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Man's Chest. This is the second installment in the Pirates of the Caribbean series, but the first one to be talked about on today's list. Pirates of the Caribbean tells the incredible story of Captain Jack Sparrow and all of his crazy and zany adventures. Pirates 2 is probably my least favorite of the five movie series, but it's not bad by any means. It's kind of just the one that I enjoyed the least of them. This movie tells the story of Jack Sparrow having to face a deal that he made a while ago with Davy Jones, and it has some really cool special effects for being made well over 10 years ago. I would absolutely recommend the entire Pirates series, but I just definitely want to say that this one is probably my least favorite. It's not bad by any means, but there's a lot better Pirates movies on this list. Next we move on up to number 22 on my list, kind of an obscure one, which is the movie Splash. Splash tells the story of Mermaid Madison who is coming to the human surface for the first time. What's funny about this movie is it tells the story of like a mermaid coming onto land in like the truest form. Like she can't speak English. She only sounds like a dolphin when she speaks. She doesn't understand the concept of public decency considering she's a mermaid and just swims all the time. And so it tells a story of her just getting acclimated to the world around us. It is a very funny movie. I definitely recommend One Watch. And fun fact about Splash is that you can thank it for the reason that Ariel has her fire engine red hair. Because originally when they were considering on making The Little Mermaid, they were gonna make her a blonde, 
but they didn't want to have the story be too closely related to Splash. But next we move on up to number 21 on my list, which is Swiss Family Robinson. Now the Swiss Family Robinson tells the story of a family that shipwrecks on an island with very limited resources and ends up creating an entire life for themselves. They create an amazing living situation and have to learn to live with the land. And this live action movie actually gets some representation in the Magic Kingdom as you can visit the Swiss Family Treehouse. But next we move on up to number 20 on my list, which is Pirates of the Caribbean Dead Men Tell No Tales. Now this is the fifth installment in the Pirates of the Caribbean movie series. So, so far we have gone two and then five. And we still have three more movies after that. <laughs> but yes, this movie tells the story of Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan's child, and spoiler alert, also the child of Barbosa. This movie is honestly very funny. I did find a lot of comedy moments in this movie that I really, really liked. But in my opinion, the plot is not necessarily as strong as some of the other ones. Although I do think the return of Orlando Bloom and Kira Knightley as Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan at the very end of the movie for a cameo was just heartwarming. Like this was the perfect way to to end the movie. But next we move on up to the final movie within the B tier, number 19, which is National Treasure, The Book of Secrets. Now, National Treasure is absolutely a fantastic movie series. I love seeing all of the puzzles come together and all of the different history. Even though it may not be accurate to real life, it is very entertaining to see all of these fun little secrets and how they piece together. And so yeah, National Treasure Book of Secrets is one that I definitely recommend watching. However, there are other National Treasure movies that I prefer more. But with that, my friends, we have reached the A tier. The A tier is full of movies that I absolutely love. These are movies that I will rewatch anytime, and I thoroughly enjoy my experience watching them. However, they just barely don't make it into the S tier. We are starting off the A tier at number 18 today, which is The Princess Diaries. This movie tells the story of Mia Thermopolis, who finds out that she is a real life princess. And so she begins her comical transformation into the Princess of Genovia. And just to put the bow on top of this incredible movie, actress Julie Andrews graces this movie as Queen Clarice Rinaldi and shows up to give our lovely protagonist Mia some princess lessons. God, I just love this movie. It is such a classic. I have nothing but good things to say about it. And I am still hoping for a third installment in this series. But next we move on up to number 17 on my list, which is Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End. This one is the third installment in the Pirates of the Caribbean series. Pirates at World's End tells the story of the group of pirates needing to travel to World's End in order to get back Jack Sparrow from the afterlife. After completing this, they then have to go to war against Lord Cutler Beckett. This movie is full of incredible visuals. The final battle takes place between two pirate ships which are going around and around a whirlpool. The majority of the cast returns for the third installments, so it's fantastic to keep seeing the same characters over and over. And this movie also puts a perfect little bow on top of the story of Will Turner and Elizabeth Swan. Absolutely love this movie, although it's still not one of my top two Pirates movies. We'll get into it, don't you worry. <laughs> Next we move on up to number 16 on my list, which is The Sister Act. Sister Act tells the story of nightclub singer Dolores who has to go undercover as a nun. Whoopi Goldberg in this movie is absolutely fantastic. I love all of the music in this movie. And while there are a lot of funny moments, the storyline is actually very impactful and I very much enjoy watching all of the nuns come together to help Dolores. But next we move on up to number 15 on my list. This is one that I don't think a lot of you will know, but I absolutely recommend watching which is Waking Sleeping Beauty. Now, Waking Sleeping Beauty tells the story of the Walt Disney Company between the movies Sleeping Beauty and The Little Mermaid. In case you didn't know, the company sort of went into a dark ages around this time, as they were just about to lose Walt Disney after The Jungle Book, and so they had to really navigate continuing to create magical stories. And while they struggled for a few years, there's definitely a light at the end of the tunnel, which was the Disney Renaissance. I absolutely recommend watching Waking Sleeping Beauty at least once. It is fantastic and I love this movie so, so much. Next we move on up to number 14 on my list, which is Who Framed Roger Rabbit? Now Roger Rabbit is 
absolutely hysterical. I love this movie so much. This movie tells the story of humans and toons living in the exact same world. There's this mysterious goo that is threatening the lives of a lot of toons, and there are some very evil humans trying to use them to erase tunes from our world. This movie is chock full of Disney references. You can see Mickey Mouse in this movie, you can see Snow White, and all honesty, the references are endless, and I could probably make an entire video all on its own all about the Roger Rabbit references. And I love that we also got a Roger Rabbit ride in the Disneyland Park over in Anaheim, California. I think Roger Rabbit's a classic. I absolutely love this story and would rewatch it anytime. Although, not the most PG movie, so. Keep that in mind. <laughs> Next we move on up to number 13 on my list, which technically wasn't created by Disney, but it was filmed and uploaded to the Disney Plus series, so I'm gonna count it. At number 13 is Hamilton. Now, Hamilton is a filmed version of the Broadway musical. It tells the story of the life of Alexander Hamilton from his birth until his passing, and it is a musical primarily made up of rap. The lyrics and music done by Lin-Manuel Miranda are just absolutely fantastic. The way he uses words to form this entire musical is just groundbreaking. And the cast in this movie is so, so good. Movie. It's a it's a musical. It's a filmed stage musical. But yeah, I definitely recommend it. It is so good, and I'm so glad that the original Broadway cast is immortalized in this recording that you can find on Disney+. Plus. But next we move on up to number 12 on my list, and the final movie within the A tier which is The Lone Ranger. Now, I know this movie did not get a lot of love when it first came out, but I think this movie is so, so funny. The comedy in this movie is honestly top tier for me. I love the snarky one-liners, I love the characters in this movie, and I really think the plot is quite strong. Again, not the most PG movie on this list, but if you're over the age of 13, I definitely think this movie is one that you should definitely experience once. It is quite entertaining. But with that, my friends, we have reached the S tier. The S tier is full of movies that I absolutely love and adore, rewatch on the regular, and would recommend to anybody that wants to experience any of the live action movies that Disney has created. In my opinion, these are the strongest of the strong, and I cannot wait to talk about all of these amazing movies. We are starting off the S tier at number 11 on my list today, which is 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. Now this is definitely one of Disney's older movies, but this is an instant classic. This movie tells the story of Captain Nemo, who is a submarine captain. He and his crew go on this incredible journey. The special effects in this movie, while definitely dated, are just classic, and they honestly hold up. There is an entire fight sequence against a giant octopus, and it honestly still looks great. And I just love the instant nostalgia that you can feel when you put on this movie. The characters are great, the storyline is great, it's, it's just classic. If you've never seen 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea before, I definitely, definitely recommend watching this movie. But next, we're moving on up to number 10 on my list. We have reached the top 10 of my list of favorite live-action Disney movies, but at number 10 is Enchanted. Now, I know this might seem pretty low for a lot of you, but there are other movies that I like a little bit more. I'm sorry! Now, Enchanted tells the story of Princess Giselle, who is from the world of Andalasia, and it is an animated world. However, through some strange circumstances, she finds herself here in the real world, needing to navigate New York City as a fairy tale princess. As the movie goes on, she gradually transforms into a real life princess and gets a lot more acclimated to our world. And I just love the performance by Amy Adams in this movie. It is so, so good. She is so perfect as Giselle. And speaking of, Giselle actually made it onto my Ranking Disney Heroines video, which I will rank up above. Even though she's not official princess status, she is a princess of our hearts. <laughs> but next we move on up to number nine on my list, which is Narnia, The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. This movie is also an instant classic to me. I loved this movie when it came out. I had a Narnia obsession, which was fueled even more by the Lion, Witch, and Wardrobe attraction that was, again, at Disney's Hollywood Studios. They had a full Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe version before they changed it into the Prince Caspian version. I miss this one so much. The White Witch would come out and speak to guests, and you would get a quick version of the story played on a screen. Ugh. And this movie would end by bringing you into a display of all of the costumes used in the original movie. The movie tells the story of the Pevensey children who come to Narnia and discover that the land is being taken over by the White Witch. They team up with the lion Aslan and end up going to war against the White Witch to free Narnia from her curse. This movie is so, so good. It is perfectly cast and I would definitely, definitely recommend this movie to any Disney fan. Next we're moving on up to number eight on my list 
which is the new version of The Haunted Mansion. When this movie came out, it became an instant favorite of mine. This movie tells the story of Ben and a group of people that end up in the mansion. The character of Gabby and her son are moving into the mansion and discover that it's haunted and enlist the help of others to help discover what is going on within the mansion. It turns out the Hatbox Ghost is slowly but surely trapping ghosts in the mansion, including some of our favorites such as Constance Hatchaway, Master Gracie, and Madame Leota, who also happen to appear on my ranking Disney Parks characters video, which I'll link up above. <laughs> and yeah, being such a fan of the original attraction, I love all of the fun and funny references that they make in this movie to the attraction. This movie very much feels like a tip of the hat to the original attraction while also putting an original storyline in it. Yes, I absolutely love this movie. 10 out of 10, definitely recommend. But next we're moving on up to number 7 on my list which is Pirates of the Caribbean On Stranger Tides. This is the fourth installment within the Pirates movie. On Stranger Tides tells the story of Captain Jack Sparrow having to navigate life on the seas on the same ship as Blackbeard himself. Blackbeard is trying to gain eternal life, and so he needs to go after the tear of a mermaid the Chalices of Ponce de Leon, and the Fountain of Youth. This movie, to me, has the perfect balance of plotline and emotionality, and also comedy. This is absolutely one of my favorites of the Pirates installments, although not quite my favorite. And while I definitely recommend the entire Pirate series, I definitely recommend this movie because it is so, so good. Next we move on up to number six on my list, which is National Treasure. The original National Treasure holds such a special place in my heart. This movie tells the story of Ben Gates, who is going around discovering different secrets of America. He visits different national monuments and very well-known places around the country and discovers fictional secrets about each one that leads him to the next clue. I love the National Treasure series. This movie in particular is my favorite amongst them. And to anybody that loves themselves a mystery and some US history, I definitely recommend watching this movie. But with that, we've reached the top five at number five on my list is The Jungle Cruise. I love this movie. This movie is so, so funny. The Jungle Cruise ride in the Magic Kingdom and Disneyland Park is obviously very well known for the punny skippers that lead you through this attraction. Well, this movie is no different. There is the exact same dry humor throughout this entire movie, and the plotline is interesting, and the acting is fantastic. I have nothing but good to say about The Jungle Cruise movie this is one that I rewatch quite often and would definitely, definitely recommend, especially to any Dwayne Johnson and Emily Blunt fans out there. They are both in this movie and they are so perfect in their roles. But next we move on up to number four on my list, the final installment of the Pirates of the Caribbean series, which is the original, number one. Pirates of the Caribbean, The Curse of the Black Pearl. This is the one that started it all. It gave us the iconic Captain Jack Sparrow and the beautiful love story between Elizabeth Swan and Will Turner. God, I love this movie. The special effects, while they can look a little off at certain times, I have to say they really do hold up. The storyline is just perfect. I love the setup into the entire rest of the series, and I love how the sequels to this movie ended up calling back to the original. This movie is so good and instant classic. If you watch and love Pirates 1, you're gonna love the rest of the series. They're all such, such good movies. With that, we're moving on up to number three on my list. For those of you who love the Disney history, number three is Saving Mr. Banks. Now, this movie tells the story of Walt Disney trying to get the rights to a very famous novel. Trying not to spoil the rest of this list. <laughs> He ends up going back and forth with author P.L. Travers, played by Emma Thompson in this movie. And this movie tells the story of Walt Disney's creation of arguably his most iconic movie of all times. Which I'm not telling you what it is because we're going to talk about it in a few minutes. <laughs> but I love that this movie takes us into the Disneyland park. I love learning about the history between Walt Disney and P.L. Travers. And this movie ends with such a feel-good energy. And Tom Hanks as Walt Disney was absolutely the right choice. He is such a a wonderful performer in this role, and he tells Walt Disney's story so honestly and so truthfully. To any Disney fan, definitely 10 out of 10 recommend Saving Mr. Banks. Next we move on out to number two on my list, one of my favorite movies of all time. At number two is Hocus Pocus. Hocus Pocus is absolutely incredible. This movie tells the story of the Sanderson sisters, Mary, Winifred, and Sarah, and we follow a few kids from Salem trying to stop the witches from coming back and taking over the town of Salem. This movie is so 
incredible. And of course, we have to hand it to our three iconic leading ladies for carrying this movie all the way through. This movie is an instant classic. I watch it every single Halloween and also a few other times throughout the year too. I love Hocus Pocus 10 out of 10 recommend. And I also love watching the Sanderson sisters grace the Disney castle stage at Mickey's Not So Scary Halloween Party. But with that, my friends, we have reached number one on my list of favorite Disney live action movies. Have you possibly guessed what it is? Yes, at number one, probably to no one's surprise, is Mary Poppins. Mary Poppins is so perfect. This movie is perfect. It is just gorgeous from start to finish. There are no slow moments. The casting is perfect. The musical moments are perfect. The storyline is so sweet and touching. And the entire movie is perfectly led by Julie Andrews as Mary Poppins and Dick Van Dyke as Bert. I truly have nothing but good things to say about this movie. I think that this movie perfectly encapsulates the Disney magic. And I think it's such a special thing that Mary herself has made it into the Disney parks. I know so many of the animated characters are the ones we're excited to see when we get to the parks, but this movie is just so iconic that Mary Poppins has to fit in with all of the other characters in the park. This movie cemented Julie Andrews' stardom and truly showed all that the Walt Disney Company is truly capable of when it comes to the cinema. Again, if you are looking for a perfect movie, it is this one. You need look no further than the original Mary Poppins. Oh my goodness. And with that, friends, we have talked about 50 of Disney's most iconic or not so iconic live action films. Thank you so much for joining me today. I had so much fun talking about all of these wonderful live action movies. If you enjoyed today's list, make sure to like and subscribe down below so that way you never miss out on magic from me. And if you'd like to find me on any of my other social medias, my handle is at Nikki Mara with two Y's and two R's. And besides here on YouTube, you can find me on TikTok, Snapchat, and Instagram. And make sure to tell me down below in the comments, which of these live action movies is your favorite? And if your favorite didn't make the list, make sure to leave it down below and I might have to watch it. In addition to these live action films, I have also ranked all of Disney's animated movies, which I will link up above. And I wanted to say once again that I am so lucky and grateful that all of you are enjoying the content so far. And believe me when I say there is plenty more to come. I am so excited for the upcoming months that I have ahead. So make sure to subscribe down below so that way you don't miss out on anything coming up. Thank you again so much for joining me today. Stay magical, enjoy the rest of your week, and I'll see y'all real soon.